Welcome to Quick Shots, a short format traditional archery podcast, where we introduce you to some of the world's most influential traditional archers, and occasionally, some random dudes. I'd like to send a big shout out to our sponsor, Archery Pass. For all your trad archery products, Archery Pass, making archery's past part of your future. ArcheryPass.com And welcome back to Quick Shots. I'm your host, Mick Chambers. I'm here with Lee Wilkins. Hey, Lee, how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm riding riding the wave, you know. It's um, pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Yeah. So, hey, man. So my 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 viewers, a lot of them know Barebow. A lot of them know Barebow. A lot of them know uh, IBO. Uh, but just in case they don't, Lee just, just crushed it uh this last weekend at lancaster uh archery classic 2022 dude i just i don't think there was any person i was in the comment section um yeah. of the uh of the video as it was going live and everyone was yeah. like lee 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 <laughs> lee lee i you cannot believe how much support i mean please leave a comment below if you supported lee <laughs> because i tell you <laughs> i know we love we love Dwayne. We love uh, John. Yep. We love Jared. Yep. We love all. We love all the guys that shot. Um, yeah, good guy. Lee, Lee, Leo. Um, but man, you came on the scene. You were the. I mean, usually it's John Denver that stands out, right? Right. Right. Yeah. It was. It was. It was cool. You know, and uh, we were talking before the uh, tournament. I was talking with Jared. You know, we were getting ready to come out and shoot. And, you know, he's like, hey, are you nervous? And I said, eh, you know, a little bit, I guess. I said, but this is why we all come here. And, you know, the funny thing about Lancaster is nobody nobody can expect to make it to the finals there. I mean, four of the top eight guys got eliminated in, in, the, in the three elimination rounds. So um, the format is, is such that anybody can make it. I mean, literally, I mean, obviously, if, you know, top 64, if you're in the top 10, then your first round is tough. But um, if you're anywhere in the middle of the pack, you can you can land in a good bracket and have a couple of good ends and you can make it to the finals. Um, and so I said, hey, this is why we're all here, you know, and, and it, it just came out great. I um, yeah, it was awesome. I certainly did not expect to be up on the podium or this, the, the platform for as long as I was. Yeah, let me just. Yeah. So first, we'll get to that. Let's dive into that a little bit. Um, but let sure. before before you, you know, because you said talked about middle of the pack and stuff. Let's just uh, <laughs> clear the record. Finished ninth overall, 8.9 yep. average of arrows. So that means yeah. you're you're shooting nines every single round. You're in the gold every single round. Um, and that was across 60 arrows. You had to shoot 60 arrows in a row. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 230 arrow rounds. And um, I kind of faltered in the second round. The first round I shot a 271. I, I was shooting really strong. Um, I didn't feel strong though. I don't know why I just, I felt like I was fighting for every point that day. And that happens, you know, if you shoot anyone that's ever shot a bow knows some days, it, maybe you hit what you're shooting at, but it's harder. And other days it's just really fluid, you know, and, and Saturday or Friday night was one of those days where it was really tough. And I struggled in the second round. I think I came out at 263 in the second round. Luckily, like, um, you know, uh, John had mentioned it during the fire. I mean, I think a uh, Matt had mentioned it during the finals that, you know, I hit a lot of 11s yeah, um, and I do. And, and that, that, that helps quite a bit, especially at Lancaster, you get that extra point for hitting the X. And, and that helped me a lot because I tend to hit the center when I miss, I lose a few points, but I hit the center a lot. So, you know, it makes up for it and it kind of averages out. It's just amazing. Yeah. Matt did mention that you hit a lot of 11s. And by the way, in our old interview, I went back to the IBO Trad Worlds when I interviewed you and I said, man, 11 11s you got. And you go, yeah, I yeah. usually shoot like 18 <laughs> or yeah. something like that. 20. Around. I like, do. <laughs> yeah. That, that's my thing. If I could just get rid of some of my flyers, I'd, it'd, it'd be magnificent because I do hit the center an awful lot. <laughs> that's fantastic. 18 meters away in case anyone's listening and they just aren't keeping up um the indoor uh bare bow uh, competition is from 18 meters away and lee is talking about uh hitting a nail head from uh 18 meters with a, an arrow so that's pretty amazing man uh just overall it's amazing and you you came out like on, on the stage you came out on the stage you, you were wearing what were you wearing tell us what you were wearing <laughs> Oh, okay. The shirt. Um, last year I, I was, it was around Christmas time 
And I was just kind of surfing through Amazon looking for T-shirts and, you know, things for my kids because I think they're funny. And I see this shirt that says, you know, it's got the dot on it, the big spot. And it says, I'd hit I'd hit that. And I thought, that's funny. So I ordered one. And, and it shows up. And my wife's like, what'd you get? I said, I bought this T-shirt. And I showed it to her. And she looked at it. And she goes, really? And I go, yeah. I said, if I make it to the finals at Lancaster, I'm going to wear the shirt. And, and she's like, you wouldn't. And I go, oh, yeah, I would. This is going to be great. So. Yeah, I had it last year and then it got, uh, you know, they got canceled last year. Um, uh, they shut down and we couldn't go. So I, it folded, got folded up, put it on the bottom of my drawer and I kind of forgot about it. So I was packing, um, you know, packing my bag to go. And my wife said, are you going to bring the shirt? And I was like, the shirt? Yes. And I dug it out and I said, yep, yeah, if I make it to the finals, I'm wearing the shirt. She, and just so, walked, yeah, well. she, just, she, she was the mojo that made that work. She really, <laughs> realistically from there. It was amazing. It was. amazing. She, she got it to me. And, and unf- you know, so it was the first year my wife didn't come with me up to Lancaster because she was going to a wedding. A uh, good friend of hers was getting married. Um, so I kind of crashed the wedding from Harrisburg because um, the whole table that were sitting around during the reception on the phone watching the finals at Lancaster at, at her friend's wedding. So <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. I think the last time we talked, your wife was in the background with us yelling, Woo! <laughs> and stuff that was that's awesome she's, she's my number one fan <laughs> that's great you have such good support huh with her that's fantastic i love that you really yeah, do I'm need that though don't you to be at your level you do you do um because it, it it takes a lot of dedication it takes a lot of work and which of course takes a lot of time um you know it doesn't it doesn't just come natural and easy you can't you can't show up on Sundays and, and, and shoot and be great. You got to work at it all the time. So even when we're, I mean, she likes to travel because traveling's fun and, you know, we get to go different places and that's really cool. But what people don't see that don't do it is, you know, the everyday standing in the backyard, going to the club, just dropping arrows and it's not fun and it's not exciting. It's just work. And, you know, it takes time and she puts up with it. And, you know, I'm lucky to have that because not everyone does, but yeah, it makes it, it makes it, easy it makes it possible really because without without putting in the work and taking the time you just you can't get that far you can't you can't do it it's too hard here's what's a, here's what's another thing that's really crazy about you you're a longbow specialist wood arrows yeah. longbow you hold you hold state records I, i'm not sure if you hold world records maybe but you you, you can mm. tell me but you know you hold state records on longbow so you have those two disciplines it's they're different are they not or are they the same what do you think well okay the big thing about longbow honestly is there's two big differences that i would point out to almost everybody a the wooden arrows wooden arrows are a thing um and the other thing is is the um the rest of course you know there's an advantage shooting off a rest of any sort as opposed to shooting off the shelf so um, but take that out. And, you know, I started, um, a number of years ago, I started shooting my longbow, just like I shoot my, my target barebow. Um, I use a wrist sling. I stand up straight. Um, you know, that's what I do. And, and honestly, a target is just a target. I don't care if it's paper, if it's fur, if it's foam, it doesn't matter. It's something you're trying to hit. And, and I shoot all the bows the same. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's the way I do it. And I, and I try to tell people that and they go, oh, but you can't do that. You can't do this. I'm like, oh yeah, watch. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can. And let's talk a little bit about, I'm going to call it this and you can yell at me and people can comment below, but let's talk a little bit about your unorthodox um, draw and, yeah. and, uh, and uh, shot cycle. Just like, tell me about that. Cause it's, for the I'll I'll try and put up some video of you doing your draw here yeah. like above this but go ahead tell us about it. Yeah, it's it's interesting. It starts just to so people know what it what looks like if they've never seen me shoot. Um it starts out with a really really low draw kind of like an olympic under the chin draw. I come down really low and then I rotate my shoulder up to a high anchor position. And I do that because a long time ago, you know, I don't know, 10 years ago, whatever it was, um, I was having a hard time getting a consistent anchor point and getting my shoulder, rotating my my draw shoulder back. I just couldn't get the, the, the ball in the socket correctly. And it seemed like a lot of work. So I kept playing with different things, doing a J draw outside and then coming low and just doing all kinds of weird things to try to get my shoulder into the position I wanted it to be in when I shot without having to mess with it once I got up to anchor. 
And I just kind of figured out over time that if I drew low and I just kind of rotated my shoulder up, so I, I, I kind of come with a low draw and then I rotate my shoulder up, it just kind of goes right into place. And it did take some practice because, um, you know, I got to get to the same anchor point and, 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 you know, set my draw length and everything. So I'm not all over the place. And it, but it was just one of those things, um, you know, I worked on it and, and it was just something I figured out on my own. And I put some time in until I got, you know, practice makes perfect. You do something long enough and you, you'll do it, you know, repeat it. You'll do it consistently if you do it long enough. And that's where I got to. So now um, it's just kind of become my thing. And I don't think I could change it if I tried anymore. You know, I just have been doing it for so long. And it looks, I know it looks weird. And every time I go somewhere, you know, one of the first comments people have is my very unorthodox, you know, methodology of getting up to anchor. Um, usually they stop commenting by, you know, target four or five if we're shooting 3D because they're like, oh, okay, forget it, you're fine. And I'm like, yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need you. That is hilarious, man. People trying to offer you advice. That would be hilarious. It happens all the time. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Well, you know, I, I don't I don't get around the circuits the same way that some of the guys do that, you know, obviously like JD and, and Dwayne yeah. and stuff. They've been traveling for a long time and they go to a lot of venues and they know a lot of guys. Um, you know, here locally, of course, I know a lot of people and, you know, I, I meet more people when I go to the trad worlds, most of the guys know me because I wanted a couple of times. So, you're, you know, I know most people there. Yeah. The, the other thing that that's really interesting about you is you're not on social media. Not at all. No. Yeah. Like, I, never had a social media I had to, I had to go through, like, even when the first time I, I was like, I don't know how to get hold of this dude. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then, and then, like, you're gonna have to message my wife. I'm like, yeah, I'm not comfortable with that. Um, <laughs> but I, I went through your uh your your other um uh biggest fan uh santos santo to, yeah. to talk yeah, to yeah. hey did he uh was he was he detrimental to your success at uh at the uh finals there in the no, he, he, was, he was awesome i yeah. mean that was great because you know they you know, we're standing up there and they come up to me, they go, Hey, do you have an archery advocate? And I'm like, Oh, like the, the arrow guy and a coach and stuff like, no, I'm just here by myself. And, and they said, well, is there anyone here that you could ask? And I go, everybody here that I, that I know like well enough to ask, they're like going to be up there or they're standing right here and they're helping someone else. Like, you know, so no, I don't really have any. And so, you know, Santo jumped in, he's like, Hey man, I'll, you know, he just kind of stepped in and, um, you know, started helping me out. And then I think Jared was running arrows after after I eliminated him in the first round. Um, he was pulling the arrows for him and bringing him back. And so, it, yeah, it was it was really awesome having that help. And it helped an awful lot. He was it was funny because Santo kept repeating the same thing my wife was saying, which I didn't know at the time. But he kept telling me, hey, man, just slow down, deep breath, breathe, just relax and breathe. Just relax. And that's what my wife was muttering to her friend. She's look because she tells me that all the time. She's looking at the phone. She's like, yeah. breathe, baby, breathe. Yeah. And it was it was funny. It was uh, almost like he was she was channeling through him. So it was a big help. I mean, it was awesome. It was really, really good. What a fantastic story. Um, just a good man, you know, good man. Jared's a good man. Um, yep. uh, you guys are just oh, top. I just love Barebow. I just love this community. There's so many good guys like you. I mean, honestly, and and I, I can't believe that. Uh, I can't believe the sport's not even more popular than what it is, but it's growing like crazy, you know. It and is. I, it is. Do you get the feel? I wasn't at the classic this year, but do, do you get the feeling that there's some guys that want to cross over, but they they just can't, like you know, from from. I think. Yeah, I think there's some guys that would like, I think there's some guys that wanted to cross over early and for one reason or another, they didn't, maybe they were just too comfortable in their current discipline or whatever. And so they were, they weren't sure if they should make the switch or not. And then, and then Barebow kind of just started steamrolling and it got really popular really fast. And the talent pool got really deep, really fast. Yeah. I mean, I remember, you know, you go back, you know, five years. I The first time I went to Lancaster was 2018, and that was the first year they expanded the cut to 32. But the year before that, at 16, I mean, you look at the top eight scores. It wasn't like now. I mean, we got 64 guys that are shooting 500. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot of that's, – it's hard. And, and you know, a lot of people compare themselves to the top shooters, all oh, these guys that are shooting 535, 45, 50. Um, but that's like, honestly, like an amateur comparing himself to, you know, Rafael Nadal playing tennis. Like you can't use that as a, as a measurement, measuring stick, you know, 
But you look at you look at Lancaster, 64 guys came from all over the place and they're all putting up a 250, basically, you know, averaging yeah. a 250 on that face at 18 meters. Yeah. People don't understand how hard that is. Super hard. You know, 25, it's, it's 25 and end, right? You 25 yeah. and end. average, yeah. end, average 25 and end. Um, the the average is nowhere near that. I no, can't it's it's insane. It's, it is insane. And then, but, but then that just emphasizes what you did, like, like 27, uh, an end, uh, you know, yeah. with a nine, nine point at, with a nine average, right. That's, that's 27. Yeah, um, pretty, pretty yep. yeah, that's this big. Like, I mean, I know, like, just go take a look at a 40 centimeter it's target. Crazy. It's tiny. Right. Um, it's essentially, a, yeah, it's, it's like a skull can, you know, <laughs> it's, skull, that's all it is. It's three skull. inches across. It's not very big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just throw one of those up there and then go out 20 yards and then hit that. Not so that, okay. I can hit, I can hit that. Every, I can hit that. I can hit that. And there's a lot of people yeah. listening can, can, can hit the gold every, you know, can hit the gold. I can hit it probably yeah. about four or five times in a row. Can I do it 60 arrows in a row? No, no. Yeah, that's the There's hard a, thing. The level. Sorry, I, I'm just being really uh, excited no, no, to talk to you. It's just you're right. You're right. It's the way it is. I just can't believe you're what, mentally. How do you tell me about the mental game here a little bit with you? Because again, well, sixty I'm, arrows. Yeah, I have a. I have kind of a natural advantage. It's just the way I am. Um, don't have stage fright. I mean, if you watch the video, you can tell. Um, I don't care. They could, you know, the, the, my, I live in Miami, you know, the, the Marlins could call me right now and say, Hey, we need you to run down to the stadium and shoot an arrow 50 yards in front of the crowd. And I'd be like, shit, can you wait? I'll be right there. I mean, it wouldn't bother me at all. Um, and it, it's just, just the way I'm wired, you know, some people take pressure and, and they can't public, they can't speak in public or anything else. It's just a personality thing. And I've never had that issue. So, um, I don't mind standing up on the stage and shooting, um, and that is, that's a big advantage. It really is. Cause I don't have to, I don't have to calm the nerves. Um, I just got to learn the, the process because the process is different. You know, there's a lot of guys, you know, at their clubs and in their backyards and they're good shooters. I know some of them and they can shoot, but tournament shooting is its own discipline outside of the, the technical aspect of shooting. The, the mental aspect of being there is tough. And the only way to learn how to do it is to do it. Um, you know, and it, it really is challenging, but I've never, I've just never had a problem with it. You know, the consistency is the hard thing. Like you stated earlier, doing it over and over and over. That's what drew me to um, indoor because I, I love 3d because I, I just love 3d, you know, it's fun to shoot, but you know, one arrow and then you wait a little while and you shoot one more. It's pretty easy to shoot one arrow relatively. It's really hard to shoot one arrow exactly the same over and over and over and over and over. It's really, really hard. So I started actually uh, shooting indoor just kind of, um, I guess, as a recreational activity because I thought it made me a better 3D shooter. Just, you know, mental toughness, that whole form thing. Yeah. And I still think that. I, I, I tell people all the time, you want to increase your there's two things you can do. You want to increase your consistency at 3D. Cause I mean, a lot of the guys I know they shoot 3D. That's what they love to do. A lot of archers, you know, cause they hunt and 3D is their thing. I tell them all the same thing, shoot indoor to make your mental game strong. I said, and shoot outdoor target to make your form strong. Cause you know what? You can't make mistakes at 60 yards. And if you can, if you can shoot outdoor target, 3D is nothing. It's, it's really easy all of a sudden. And, and if you can mental, you know, strengthen up your mental game at indoor, then, you know, you, you got the best of both worlds. You can really make, you know, improve. Yeah. That's great advice. Um, what, uh, what are you using? What's your, what's your setup? We saw it at Lancaster, but for people who didn't watch yep. Lancaster, give us your, give us your setup. Um, yeah, right now I'm shooting a, a CD riser, um, CD 27 XO. Yeah. The WF 27 XO from CD archery. I love it. It's fantastic. Um, it weighs four and a quarter pounds. I don't add weight to it. I used to have weight on it. I took some off. I thought it was a little bit too heavy. Um, I'm pretty happy with it right about where it is. Four and a quarter um, is nice. I'm shooting Uka limbs. Now it's a 27 inch riser and I shoot XL limbs. Okay. So it's a 70, it's a 74 inch bow. Um, but I have, my draw is about 29 and a half. So I have a fairly long draw. Um, and it's super smooth and I don't care about performance. I know I can get more performance with a shorter limb, but at 20 yards, I don't need more performance. I just like it to be really smooth and really easy to shoot. So I shoot XLs. 
Um, I hold about 39 on the fingers right now and I'm shooting, um, you know, I pretty conventional. I have a bit of rest, like pretty much everybody does. Yep. And I'm shooting a Spigarelli ZT or I mean a bitter plunger and I bitter shoot plunger, a Spigarelli. Yeah. And I, I love the ZT rest 30 bucks. And I think it's fantastic. I love that rest. Um, yeah. do you, do you, have you ever had yeah. a, a wire break on you on this? Never, never have. But I don't string walk either, so I don't put a lot of downward pressure on the wire. So, and when I do, if I do crawl um, at indoor, it's a very short crawl. So I don't put a lot of, yeah, I don't get that downward pressure that you get from extreme crawls on string walking. So right. I've never had any. The wire. I, you know, I don't think I even noticed that. Maybe I did notice that that you're you're almost up against the knock. Yeah. Um, yeah. How do you get point? Out, how do you do that? How did you do that? I, you know. <laughs> I didn't start thinking about that until recently because I listened to what other people shoot in the arrow weights and the poundages and they're like, yeah, and I got to do this and my arrows weigh 520 grains and blah, blah, blah. I shoot full length PS 23s. They only weigh 380 grains, hundred yeah. grain points. Yeah. And apparently I have a pretty short distance from my anchor point to my eye. Cause I don't anchor crazy high. Like Dwayne has a really high anchor and, and it's reasonably high, but it's not crazy. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, just, I guess, between my face geometry and, and my head position and everything else, um, I didn't try to do it that way. It just kind of worked out that way. But I, I, lolly, I lollipop the gold with those arrows and they're, they're traveling pretty quick. So I get some of the benefit of string walking, you know, because I, I don't have the, I'm not shooting a, you know, a rainbow trajectory. The arrows are traveling pretty fast. Um, I like the forgiveness of being up against the knock because, you know, the farther you crawl down the string, the more you're taking the limbs out of tone, out of tune. Yep. So, you know, it, it's pretty demanding of your form. People think that string walking is magic. Like, oh, well, if I can just string walk and get point on that, your form's got to be pretty tight. If you're especially the longer the crawl you pull, the, you know, the better you got to be at it. So um, I kind of like being up near the knock, you know, keeping the, the limbs timed as evenly as possible. I think it's the most forgiving setup and it just works out. Luckily that I can do it with a fairly light arrow and um, still get point on. And so, you know, I get kind of the benefits, best of both worlds type of thing. Yeah. And, and you don't have to go too far afield from what you do with your longbow, right? Cause you're right. It, yeah. It's very similar. Cause I touched the knock there too. So I don't change you know, I don't change a whole lot. And, and part of that is natural. It just happened. And then once I realized what was happening, you know, once I started to appreciate what it was, then I started to find ways to make it even better. So yeah, I work on my arrows and my strings and I do, you know, things to, to kind of finesse it in, but I was pretty close anyways, just, you know, as a natural result of my shooting form. So kind of worked out but serendipity. Whatever, whatever that magic formula is that you're doing just keep doing it i i think that could have went either way um like i said i was in the comments and people were just it was the, <laughs> it was the lee show i'm telling you right now yeah. I, like we look again for people who are listening we love all everyone that shot that you know um yeah. some of these guys are just fantastic uh representative representatives of uh, traditional archery barebow archery but so are you dude um you heard like and i think that's what I keep telling people. Like people are like, who's, you know, like, who's this? And like, what are you talking about? Who's this? This is guy's been around forever. He's been right. uh, cleaning house forever. <laughs> um, but you, I think you represented yourself and you represented uh, archery and us, you know, barebow community, like fantastic, man. Fantastic. Great job. I want, I just want to say thank you from everyone. I know there's probably like a hundred people listening going, don't say <laughs> thank you. Cause he's, he's killing it. He's killing it. I loved it. I loved it. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. It was, it was, it was so much fun. And you know, what's funny is I look back, I came home, I flew home. And so we started watching the video because my kids had, they weren't watching it when it went live, you know, and everything. So we sat down and we watched, I didn't realize how long I was up there. I mean, I stood up there for an hour forever, and it didn't seem like an hour. It really didn't. They just kept calling names and I was like, okay, you know, it, I want to go. Okay. And I, I didn't know what my scores were. I just kept shooting arrows. I and, talking. um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I didn't realize what I shot. I didn't realize that I knew I shot a 90, whatever it was against Jared the first round. And I knew my scores were getting better just because, you know, I saw the arrows hit, but I didn't know. I mean, I, I shot a, what a, what a one, I think I shot a 110 yep. against uh, Ryan Davis. 
yep. which is a huge score, you know, and, and I didn't realize I was shooting quite that good. I just knew I was shooting good enough to keep going. And so I said, well, I'm just going to keep shooting as long as I can shoot, you know, and um, the time went by really, really quickly. Um, a lot of love in that room. I know I felt a lot of support. Of course, I know a lot of the people yep. and, um, you know, and it, it was, yeah, it was great. It was really, really, that was so, a lot of fun. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I was talking to my friend, uh, Jeff Cavanaugh, uh, who's a trad archer and, uh, he was, he's, he's, he's on the Lee train right now. Uh, he, he was just love. He's like, I love this guy. I love him. He's, you know, he's so good. Um, and, um, I said, yeah, he is. He's really good. And he's a trad archer too. And you know, it's, it's pretty cool. And, um, and he said, you know, this is unfair. He should have, he should, he should have won the whole thing. He should have won the whole thing. It's like, you can't stand up there and expect one guy to beat all these guys in a row. That's just impossible. Uh, you know, it's like, it's like, it's so true. I mean, should, what do you think about those rules? Like, how do you feel about this? I, I like them. Um, I really do. I really like them because, it was hard. It was absolutely hard as hell to start at the bottom position and shoot your way up. But you know what? Um, I could have shot better against Dwayne. I really could have. I, I I was running out of gas. I mean, I'd shot at that point, you know, I'd shot 60 arrows going into it. And, and just for some perspective, you know, the qualification rounds, we shoot 60 arrows back to back. It takes about three and a half hours. I did it in less than an hour. Um, you know, the same amount of arrows. So, um, but honestly, you know, I, I, I haven't been training as hard um, this past year or so. The pandemic kind of slowed everything down. You know, last year we weren't doing any matches. Um, everything got canceled. So, you know, you find other things to do and, you know, other ways to be productive with your time. And, of course, you do. I, I, I do anyways. I'm doing maintenance shooting all the time, but I don't shoot the volume of arrows that I used to. And so, you know, and, and we're still sort of getting back into it. It's only been, you know, the last six, eight months that things have been really rolling and getting back to some kind of normal. So, um, I mean, because typically, you know, a practice session with me, I was shooting, you know, before pandemic, um, I was typically, I was shooting three to 500 arrows a week, every week. I mean, that was just what I did, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm lucky enough that I, I live in suburban Miami, but I have a pretty big backyard. I can shoot to like 29 yards in my backyard diagonally. So I have my target all the way in the corner. And, you know, I come home and I just, you know, got bows on the rack. <laughs> yeah. And I just, I just pick them up and shoot them. And, and so I, I, you know, I have that, you know, opportunity to do that. Um, but I haven't been doing that. And, and I'll tell you what, about, about the time Ryan came out, I started thinking about that and I thought, Hmm, yeah, I wish I had a couple hundred more hours a week under my belt for the last six months. Cause I'm starting to get a little, you know, starting to get a little tired, but whatever, you just keep shooting and go through it. I mean, I, I faltered a little bit, you know, shooting against Dwayne and part of it was fatigue. Um, part of it's mental fatigue too. It's, it's, uh, it was, it was a really weird experience, the crowd doesn't bother me, but man, people don't, I didn't realize, and I watched the cloud, been there, I watched the finals, but I don't realize the perspective of standing on that platform and you have this camera zipping back and forth in front of you on your feet that you can see, and you got your own target video there. Then you got your targets out that you're shooting at, and above that, you got video of you shooting, which is what the camera that is in front of you is taking picture. Wow. And you can see all that stuff. I mean, it's not right in your line of sight, but it's in your peripheral. You see it all. Yeah. So every, you bring your bow up and you see the movement that coincides with your movement on the video screen. And, you know, they are all the funny lighting and stuff like that. And it that took a little bit of getting used to, you know, it's the, the whole atmosphere is different. So, um, you know, but once I kind of got used to that and I'm, of course, bouncing back and forth to the stage, you know, it was funny when. Uh, well, Dwayne had come out and he asked me, um, you know, if I don't know if you noticed, Dwayne didn't bump me off the stage. He asked me, he goes, hey, which side do you want to shoot from? Wow. And and I, I said, hey, I said, man, I've been shot, shooting from both sides all night. Where what doesn't matter to me, Dwayne, wherever you're comfortable, pick pick a platform, man. <laughs> he goes, I'll shoot on this side. I'm like, OK, so, you know, off we went. Um, yeah, it was really cool. It was really cool. There's so many. I mean, at that at your level, there's so many. Um, it's, it's really, it's a game of, you know, centimeters, millimeters, you know, yeah. um, cause you guys are, are just so, so qual qualified, so talented. Uh, it really is. I, I can't get over the feat that you, you, you accomplished. I mean, honestly, it, it's, it's, I think everyone's really, really proud of everyone that competed 
And I, I just keep going back to the fact too, some of my friends, you know, <clears throat> were on the line and they, oh, I didn't shoot my best. I didn't shoot my best. You know, Jared, you know, was, I was talking to him a little bit afterwards and I didn't shoot yeah. my best. I, I didn't have my gay game, you know, and I'm like, dude, you did so good. You did so good. And I don't think anyone would deny that. And you, man, you, you were just, I know, I know I'm gushing a little bit. I'll, I'll shut up. I'll shut up. That's all right. I'll That's your up. way. I guess I was gushing the whole way home. I was trying to find people to tell. <laughs> It it's so exciting. I mean, it's a big deal. You know, it's, I know it's, it's it, it, you know, it's only three. It's a hobby to us. You know, we're not making our lives. I mean, some, some of the people over there on the compound side probably making a living doing this, but none of us are. We do this because we love our tree. Um, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's awesome. It's pretty humbling. I mean, to have that many people cheering and just supporting you and you can feel the support. I mean, they really, they, you know, they want you to win. And it was great. I, I, I don't know how many people, dozens of people, literally dozens and dozens of people that I've never seen before walked up to me, man, that was great. That was awesome. What a great display. You're a great shooter. This is just nonstop. And it's like awesome. It's, it's, you deserve it's humbling. It. You, really you, humbling. You, de you deserve it. You deserve it. Uh, you deserve it. You deserved it on all the other uh, championships that you've won. Uh, Tried World was fan freaking tasket overall champion. You know, I, there's just so many yeah, great was, things that you've done. Man. <laughs> I mean, yeah, how many? You know, all the buckles you probably have. You don't even have enough belts for all them buckles. Um, you know, so <laughs> yeah, I don't you know, wear them. I got a bunch of them. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're you're an amazing shooter, amazing person, great great uh, representative of the sport. You know, the single string sport. So really appreciate you. How if people do yeah, want to reach out to you, how like that's your problem. You need to get it on Instagram, at least have an Instagram account so that we can just say nice things. Yeah. To I'll, I'll, say yeah, I've thought about that. I probably should, I guess. You know, for a long time I I, I just I mean I just shot because I like to shoot and I go to the shoots and you know I have these my archery friends and you know, since I live down in Miami, so you know, nobody lives around here. And, you know, because most of the guys live in the center of the country and up north. So I get to see them a couple of times a year. And it's great. You know, I go to Lancaster and I get to hang out with with all these guys that I only get to see once a year or twice a year. And I go to the Worlds and I see some of them there. And, um, you know, it's really, really cool. Um, yeah. and, and I was always just really happy with that. And then, you know, yeah, over the last couple of years, you know, I caught, mm, I'm not really a social media guy, but... I know there's a lot of people out there that I would like to keep in touch with and maybe I should. So I don't know. I'm still on the fence. We'll see. Don't be on the I'll fence. I'll get something. Start an account and, you know, I will push it out too. And then we'll, we'll just, there'll be a ton of people. You're going to have a ton of people, maybe too much, too much stuff. Okay. Here, you heard right. it here first. Uh, Lee will have, Lee the beard uh Wilkins will have the uh, I don't know what we'll have some nickname for you but on on, Inst on Instagram <laughs> you know what's funny is I just trimmed my beard yeah it was it was I it was a good hand width longer than this just a couple of weeks ago it's, I mean it was it, a lot of people have commented on that too it's fantastic yeah. you know it's fantastic <laughs> seriously uh, so but, okay so they can't get hold of you right now but if they just stick around, I'm, t I'm going to push Lee to get on, on guys. I'm going to push him to get on Instagram, or maybe your wife or something. So we can get hold of you and you can put post your yeah, pictures yeah. and, and those sort of things, whatever you want to do. Um, but it would be awesome to have you on there. Um, we'll anyone else you want to give a shout out to before we uh, call it a day? Well, let me see. Um, man, there's so many people. I'd, I'd, I'd be almost uh, afraid to, to miss yeah. somebody who I, I, I don't you know. Can I follow mean, up on Instagram. Probably, yeah, I'll follow up. I mean, yeah, a lot of people. I want to, I do want to thank, I do want to, I, I can't say it enough. I want to thank Santo again. That was awesome. Uh, he really was a big help and I appreciated having him there. It was nice to have someone talking, talking you through that, you know, and just, Hey, take, you're doing good. Relax. You're okay. Like, you know, just simple things, but it's, it's important, you know, and, and uh, um, I just wish I could have beat Dwayne with his own bow. <laughs> that would have been <laughs> <That's funny>. <laughs> <laughs> That, that like, been, hey, that you, been. you're the one that made the bow you know, right. like, that's funny <laughs> hey so so do you have any sponsors or anything like that you need to say hi to or say? i don't i don't have any sponsors um you know i just i'm just i'm just an archer guy uh you know so i but i do i did i did get some props from uh tracy and eric yo so i give them a shout out for their tabs i use them i love them i think yeah. they're great um 
I shoot black eagles, and those are the only arrows I shoot because uh, I tried them. Uh, I don't know, six seven years ago, I picked up some on on clearance at Lancaster, and I tried them, and they shot great. So I tried some more, and they shot great. And uh, the only arrows I own now, I own probably half of the ones that they manufacture, and you know, at least a dozen of them. And I got them all, and those are all they shoot. So I really like those. Um, they don't sponsor me. They don't do anything for me. But, you know, I, I use them because I believe in them. I like them. So, um, awesome. you know, kudos to Black, uh, 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 Black Eagle. I appreciate that. Um, so, yeah. It's awesome, man. And Lancaster, you know, Rob, I mean, that tournament is so much fun. Um, you know, w once they started it, I, I looked into it and I saw the format and I knew it would be fun. And it took a few years. And I finally said, you know let's fly up there. And I want to shoot this, this Lancaster classic thing. You know, this was back in 2018 and, and I was hooked there. I mean, it would take some pretty impressive force to get me to miss it. If, if they're holding the classic, uh, it would, it would take some strong force for me not to go. Um, yeah. I enjoy the heck. Of it. It's just my Congrats to Rob and, and the whole Lancaster team that made that happen. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, so a little bit of labor of love, you know, you know, he, he, he actually loves us. He loves uh, the bear bow group and, and that's awesome. Yeah, he hey, does. <laughs> what, what are you doing next? Where, where can we see you next? I'm going to, uh, well, I'm going to, I'm going to shoot the U S nationals. Um, I'm actually going to fly up and do that in Harrisburg, Virginia, okay. um, just because it worked out and I can be up there instead of shooting it down here in Florida. And then I'm planning on going to the indoor nationals in Louisville, uh, with any luck, I'll make the U.S. finals and I'll shoot those on Thursday and then shoot the NFA indoors on Saturday and Sunday is the plan. OK, so no Vegas for you, but that's cool. You know, you get, no you need Vegas is too, too, too. well, you know, I'd love to go to Vegas, but um, the, their, their format shooting 30 arrows a day and traveling across the time zones, I have to take literally have to take at least three days off from work just to go to Vegas. Okay. And it's in the middle of indoor season. So, you know, I want to go to the indoor nationals and I want to go to, and I'm, I'm going to go to Lancaster and then I've got other things, you know, then there's some local events that happen in February and different things that, you know, you can't, I can't do everything. No. So um, one of these days I'll retire and I'll have nothing but time and, you know, I'll be a man of leisure and then I'll go shoot every tournament that they, that they can muster. But uh, in the meantime, you know, I got to pick and choose a little bit. Um, yeah. I'm trying out again for the, uh, the world, uh, the U S archery team for the 3d, cause you know, the 3d world championships are in Italy this year and they're hosting, they're having the tryouts in June. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, try that and see if I can make the U S archery team and maybe travel over to Italy and shoot against the Europeans. That would be fantastic. Hey man, thank you so much for being on the show. I appreciate you so much. I really do hope you do. And I'm being serious. I do hope you get an Instagram account so I can keep up with you and I can share I will. stuff with I'll you. I literally don't want to force you into it, but it would be nice for your fans. No, Cause you, you have a fan soon. base now. You have a fan base now. Get used to it, dude. You know, well, you know, what's funny. One of the, one of them, I think one of the greatest compliments I ever got was um, not too long ago, a couple of years ago, I think it was right before the pandemic. And I was standing up, I think we were in Lancaster. No, we were at the trad world and I was talking to Dwayne and we were just kind of shooting the shit, you know, and, and talking. And I, and I made a comment about how, well, you know, you get into some finals or a shoot off and these guys are shooting against, you know, Dwayne Martin, that's impressive. And he looked at me and he goes, or they're shooting against Lee Wilkins. Yeah. And I go, yeah, you're funny. Doing this. I'm serious. Yeah. And, and I was like, okay. And he was serious. And I'm like, wow, that was, that was a nice thing to say, you know, because you don't, you don't, you know, I mean, I don't consider myself, I don't see myself in that light. I mean, I know I'm a good shooter because I put up big scores and, and, and I shoot well, but yeah. I don't know. I just don't see myself that way. I'm just, you know, kind of a semi redneck guy from Florida that shoots a bow. <laughs> you, know? you are a, not a good shooter. You are a incredible shooter. And uh, I thank you again thank for being you. on the show. Thanks for everyone for sticking around. Um, yeah. This was amazing. Uh, I love, I love chatting with you. We go on. Yeah, yeah. This is called quick shots. So we got to be quick. And so I yeah, hope everyone yeah. enjoys it. Uh, <laughs> Stay positive, test negative, and uh, we'll talk to you on the next one. See you guys. All right. Thanks, Mick. I appreciate it.